All right, everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over uh, tonight's NHL slate with kind of a focus on, on process and how I would go about, you know, entering and putting my lineups together and overall what, what to do. Um, it is early in the day, so this is not going to be actually the lineups I put in, but, you know, I, I do like to, to do these from time to time, and someone was asking, so I figured it would be a good day to do it. So first thing I'll do is I'll take a look at the slate, like in general. So the first thing I'm going to notice, and I'm going to just focus on DraftKings today, is that it's a uh, it's a five game slate, and I'm going to look at the the tournament offerings here and just see if there's anything I need to notice. Um, like sometimes if there's a bigger buy in, things like that, I'll just make a little note of that because I want to gauge what types of players I'm going to be up against, how many things like that. The other thing that's kind of interesting to think about is what else is going on uh, in sports that day. Um, like today is just a random Wednesday. Okay. So uh, people still have time to put in their master's bets, uh, master's lineups, but master's is going to, you know, take some people's attention. Uh, the other thing is the NBA. Let's take a look at the NBA slate. It's a little six game slate and people are kind of over it, the NBA right now, just because, just there, everybody's just kind of frustrated with it. And, and it's a, you know, you're getting a lot of reserves playing and things like that. So only the real true, true diehard professionals are, are really putting the effort into the NBA at this particular point. Um, the only reason I bring all this up with respect to the NHL is sometimes there are NBA slates. There's like one game slate or two game slates, which will draw a lot of attention to hockey. Um, which means the, 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 the entries will be bigger and things like that. So overall, I would just say it's your average kind of NHL slate with respect to what day of the week it is. It's the, you know, during the week. So you know, you'll probably get a decent amount of regs in there. You won't get a lot of casuals or anything like that. Um, now, with respect to it being a five-game slate, what that usually means is that you can get a little bit of uh, a little bit funky with your lineup builds. In other words, for sure a full 10 game slate, I would say make sure you have four threes or five twos or sixes or whatever. But in a five game slate, you can kind of mess around a little bit. And if you do get to some lineups with, you know, three, two twos and things like that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be opposed to putting those types of things in. Um, as long as I'm here, may as well take a look what else is going on. There is a featured showdown slate, Calgary Anaheim. So if you want to play that, feel free. Uh, I'm not going to build anything for that, though, in this video. If that's the overall look. Um, may as well take a look and see what the games are before we even get into anything else. So one thing that's to, interesting to notice is it, it breaks up into two different time slots. You have the early game, the 738, and then you have the two 10 o'clock games. And... Before I even get into it, I'll make a note. There's no, no Toronto and there's no Edmonton. Like every, every day that Toronto or Edmonton plays, you know, those, those guys are going to be projecting really high and you're always going to have to decide whether to play Edmonton or Toronto when they're playing, but they both played last night and they're both off today. So you have kind of a fair slate, you know, where you, I wouldn't think you'd have a one team that stands out above everybody else until we get into the projections. Okay. So that's the first thing I'll do is I'll take a look in, in general what the slate might look like. What I used to do in some sports is just take a shot at build like a lineup before I even look at projections. Like I'll do that in football and golf. And I'll try in NBA and baseball sometimes, but I, I'm really actually not as familiar with the way with hockey, the, the intricacies of the teams to be able to, to do that without looking at least something. So for hockey, I probably won't do that. What I will do to start off is access the true DFS projections, um, which again, this is going to be a free video. So you get a free look at this, but for premium subscribers, um, this is what you get. Um, and, but whether you use mine, you know, or, you know, you, you subscribe to other places, you get projections, you got to start somewhere. And we're looking at my projections now, which I'm ranking them by sheets value score which is kind of my own way of, of, of assessing how good of a play something is. It's a combination of both, you know, upside, uh, 
points per dollar and salary and raw points, I'm sorry. Then you have points per dollar over here, raw fantasy points over here, projected ownership. And this is again, early in the day. So this is not gonna be particularly tight. Like I have a zero on this one who might be the best play on the slate. So it's obviously not gonna be zero. Um, so just kind of, you, just, you gotta look at that, you know, as the day goes on. So what I will do first is I will just kind of gaze at this, right? This is before I even do anything and, and see if anything kind of stands out. Like the first thing you'll notice is there's no position player that stands out over everybody else. Um, the, 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 the highest rated play based on my value score would be the goalie, um, Bennington. Usually you get a couple of really strong value plays at the, at the at, at skaters but I don't really have that much that stands out over everybody else. Like the top guys right at 34, 31, 20, it's all pretty close. So you don't have that standout value that you sometimes get. So that's something to kind of think about before you can build anything. The next thing you'll do, I'll do is see if there's any team that kind of scrunches up here at the top. Um, it would indicate that there is a stack that it rates to be really, really strong. So the first thing I'll notice is that you have two, two Winnipeg guys right here at the top. Uh, Connor and Ellers. Um, and then you go down here and you have Sheffle also. So two of the top, you know, 10 values and two of the top nine, eight position player values, three of the top are all from Winnipeg. So you'd think that Winnipeg would be kind of a premium stack to kind of start with in your hand bills, right? And then the next thing I guess I'll notice is that you know, maybe Vegas would be the next one. So you have, you know, Dadanoff over here and you have Eichel over here and, and well, Leonard's a goalie, but then you have March Assault. So I would think before I even looked at any type of builds that Winnipeg and Vegas, excuse me, uh, and Vegas would be the top stacks. Um, so that's, that's, that's the next thing I do is just kind of get an idea. So if you were going to hand build, you would just do exactly what I just said. I mean, you take the best play in goalie, which would be probably Bennington. And then you'd probably build a stack out of Winnipeg or Vegas and then just kind of go from there. Like, for example, I may, I may as well, I can do that, right? We'll see. So if you put in Bennington right over here, and where would I start? Let's, you want to start with Winnipeg? So do Winnipeg. What was it? Connors, Sheffle, and um, um, Ellers, so we start with those. Uh, what position is Connor? Is Connor a wing? Yes, yeah, so let's put him where he's supposed to be. So you have those three. And then just for the hell of it, let's put the Vegas guys in. Because I think you might be able to get away with it. So the Vegas, who is it? It was Marchishol and um, Davinoff, right? Um, where is he? Davinoff. And then we're going to need a center um, from one of these teams. So we'd probably have to look and see who the center is from Vegas that goes with these guys. Who's it? Eichel? Yeah, it was Eichel, actually. So we'll put him up here. So you'll see that you probably can't afford all of this, right? Um, so you'd have to kind of try to find some good values. And probably what I would end up doing is just picking one of these, whether it be, you know, Vegas or Winnipeg, and then fill it in with, you know, with other guys from Winnipeg maybe from the power play or something like that and build like kind of a five man for one of those. And then I would just go back to the, um, uh, back here. And then was kind of a neat little trick and you sort maybe by point per dollar. This, this gets you access to more of the, you know, the cheapos. Um, so you know, for example, you get Yanmark, you know, he could be part of the same team. Um, Chandler Stevenson. So you can build a five man with Vegas and make that work. Um, and then obviously you got to find your defenseman to, to put together your lineups. So if I was going to hand build, that's pretty much exactly what I would do is I would end up with either a five man from, you know, from, from Vegas or a five man from Winnipeg or some combination of the two, fill it in with some of these cheapos and just kind of be on my way. Um, but if I'm going to play like a bunch of lineups, I am going to want to use an optimizer to build these things. And, and, and I'm, I like using SaberSim. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go in here. And you can do that from our site as well. And what you don't have to do, I mean, if you go on our site, it actually is uploaded for you already. 
you have the Saber Sim sheets and the and my sheets. Um, whenever I put them up there, it automatically gets uploaded. Um, but I'm just going to do this on my own here, just to kind of give myself a different view. Um, so make sure that you have all these things uploaded. Make sure you have the name, projection, and ownership uploaded. Um, and then again, if you have the Saberson package from our site, then you can go ahead and do this. Um, you'll be able to see all this. And then what I'll do is I'll just run them. So let's say I want to build 30 lineups. I'll build, I'll stick with the Saberson sliders the way they are. Just to give you an example of what I might do differently. Like if I want a little less variance, if I rely on my projections a little bit more, I'll, I'll pair this back a little bit. So let's just do that. And then we'll put in 30. I don't mess with anything else. That's what I don't. I mean, like if you want to put min uniques or limit your exposure to like 50% of a player, that's fine. Or limit your, your salary. You could do that, but I don't. Um, I, I just kind of start with what it is. So you see it's building 500 lineups. That doesn't mean you want 500. I only want 30, but what it does is it gives you a pool of five, your 500 top lineup to choose from so that if you, you know, do kind of some funny business in the quality control, which happens next, it automatically has lineups to choose from and it doesn't have to rebuild for you. Okay. And that's what, that's kind of an interesting little you know, positive to Saberson. Like you use some of the other optimizers, if you don't like the lineups you get and you want to X somebody out, it doesn't automatically have lineups ready for you to replace them. They, you have to kind of rebuild with new settings. Here, you can change your settings along the way and have your lineups just kind of automatically adjust for you, which is uh, very interesting. So this is what I get. And it's very interesting <laughs> that, that when I run my Saberson build, you can see even visually, I don't even have anyone to pay. <laughs> Uh, or I don't have any, uh, whatchamacallit, um, uh, Vegas is my top ones. You see over here on the right, you're just getting blues and red wings, which is kind of, which is, which is why, you know, I like using the, the Saber Sim because, because Saber Sim is no, as no, you know, they, they, they don't just pull median projections. They actually run, run simulations and they adjust this for upside. And that's why, you know, you get all these guys are like 0.2% owned in these, in these, lineups of mine because they account for ownership in the building of their lineups um so what i like to do is i like to take a look at what these lineups look like so the first thing i'll do is i'll look at stacks like how it breaks down like it says 30 percent of them are four threes 20 percent are five twos 16 percent are sixes and then down the line um I, I like this a lot actually uh, because i do like having pure stacks which these top four are um, and because it's a shorter slate, I will give them the benefit of giving me like one lineup from all these other kind of like weird situations. Um, if this were a bigger slate, I might just X out these non, you know, pure stacks, but for today, I'm going to leave it. Then we go into teams. So I'd like to see what, um, oh, interesting. What my exposure is. And actually, I'm wrong. There, there is, I do get about 50% Winnipeg. It was just, it was not rated as my top ones for, um, for based on Sabre score. Um, so that's the only reason I missed it. But I am still getting 50% Winnipeg. Um, and I don't mess with this at all. Uh, and 40% Detroit. Then what you could do is you could break it down and see where your stacks are coming from. Like of my five man stacks, uh, four of them are from Winnipeg, three are from Detroit, one's from Vancouver. And again, I'm just kind of eyeball this and see if there's anything that I really don't like. And fortunately or unfortunately, I don't know what I don't like. You know, I'm not that great at hockey knowledge. So I have no preconceived biases of what I don't want a 50% Winnipeg, like for example. Like, whereas like some of the other sports, like NBA and baseball, I'll say, well, I don't want to play him. Like, I'll just X him out with confidence. Maybe that confidence is misguided. Maybe you should just kind of rely more on the numbers and less on your gut and your instinct. And fortunately in hockey, I have no gut or instinct. So I normally just go ahead and just, just roll with it. But there's one thing that I, I, I do do from time to time. So what I would do with this build. 
I would go into players and I would try to avoid players that are not going to play a lot. In other words, what I will do is I will, I really don't want to play guys that are either on the fourth line or the third line, unless they're part of the power play. Like for example, when we rank these by, by even strength lines, Daniel Sprong is on the fourth line, but he's at least on the number one power play. But like this guy, for example, Nick, uh, whoever's it, whoever he is, Nick, uh, we're not going to play him. I mean, he's, he's on the fourth EV line with no power play. So I'll just exit. And then as you know, it, it'll redo all your lineups. And then this one, you have to make a decision whether you want a four, two, like a, Guy on the fourth even straight line, and only the only run you'll get is on the second power play line. Maybe I don't want that. So I might be inclined to, to X that out. And aside from that, I think that we're we're pretty good here. So I have the 30 lineups. And to continue the process, I will just download them. They're in my download file. Then I will. Go to my lineups page, upload lineups. Actually, I don't need it that way. Upload it this way. Go back to my download file. Hit upload. So now all my lineups are up there. And then, I mean, I'm going to change them so I can put that. So I'll just show you the processes. I'll go right in here, find what I want. It's actually probably good that I'm doing this so I can reserve my spots and enter. It'll pull up all the lineups I have. I'll just kind of click yes, go. Um, yes, I'm sure. You see they're all in there. Then what I'll do is I'll reserve a spot in the, in the 333. For now, I'll just put kind of the top performing lineup, but I'm gonna probably tweak that. And I do want to kind of reserve my stuff. Now, what is this one? This is the 80, 88. It's a three max 2K for first. I'm probably not going to participate in that one. Um, and just because we're doing this, let's play this single entry. The, this is a single entry. No, it's not a single entry. But it's 5K for first. You can put a max 17 in. Let's put this one line up in here. And then we'll be done. And that's it. Um, you know, as, as projections change during the course of the day, I'm going to have to, you know, redo the whole process, but that, that is you asked, and that is how I play hockey. Uh, I don't, you know, do any other external research or anything like that. One thing you could do is, you know, what you want to do like near the, near the start of the, before the game starts is to keep an eye on Twitter and see if there's any late you know, late, late substitutions or anything like that. But aside from that, that's what you would do with any sport anyway. That will do it. Um, good luck in tonight's slate and uh, good luck with your hockey contests.